Hi there, Matt Wade here. And as I finish my mini vacation, I wanted to share with you one more quick Microsoft Teams tip, and that is how to send or share an email from Outlook directly into Microsoft Teams. That includes all the content from the email itself and all of the attachments automatically get uploaded into Teams where you can discuss uh, the email and any decision-making that needs to go along with it in Teams safely, quickly, and then jump right back into Outlook and send the response to the original sender directly from there. So let's dive in. All right, so we're gonna cover how to share an email with Microsoft Teams uh, directly to a channel. And there's actually two different ways to do this. One is a very easy way that's now getting built into Outlook both, uh, for the web and for the desktop app. Uh, and then the other is using the email address of a specific channel. So we're gonna go through the first one, which is sharing directly from uh, Outlook using the built-in uh, native you know, connection tool to Teams. And then the second one will be using the email address. Uh, while these are functionally uh, pretty much identical in the end, they uh, do the same thing. The actual use case for it and some tweaks at the very beginning of how it works uh, can be useful in certain situations. So I, I want to cover the easier one that more people will probably use first, uh, first, and then I'll do the email address one because that one actually gives you more options and I'll talk about what that means in just a little bit. So if I jump over into my mail right now, you can see I have an email here from Alex Wilbur. He actually forwarded this email and it has some attachments to it. You can see a Word document, a PowerPoint, a slideshow. I want to send this to a team that I have. Uh, that I want to uh, basically take this input because uh, let's say you can imagine this email had 15, 20, 50 people on uh, the, the two line of the CC and all those people need to be aware that this conversation is happening, but you don't want to do all those really awkward reply alls and saying, you know, uh, just even minor, just okay, got it, those types of responses. Maybe the discussion process for this actually needs to take place inside of my organization internally so that we can actually discuss this, come to a conclusion uh, among our team of 5, 10, 15 people, uh, debate it privately so that we can get the best outcome that we want, and then also make edits to the files that are provided to us so we can send back one file with all the edits, uh, maybe with track changes on, so that uh, you know Alex or Andy, the original sender, can then get uh, just one response back from us as a reply all, or somebody designated on our side uh, sends that back with the updated versions of those files. And that's really the beauty of this share with Teams, because when you share, it's going to send the email to a channel in Teams. It's going to take the content of the email and make that the first message in a new conversation. The subject line of the conversation is gonna be the subject of the uh, email itself, which is great. Uh, and then the email itself, uh, .eml file, I think, will be uploaded directly into the files channel in Teams and any attachments that you have will get uploaded as well. So you can be making file up, uh, edits directly in Teams. Uh, no worries about changing what's happening in the email. So let's jump right into this. Um, in the Outlook for Web, which is what I'm gonna to use to do the demo here, uh, you have the ability under this more actions for an email and you can just click share to Teams. You also will have this in the ribbon in the Mac OS and Windows version of Outlook. Uh, if you don't see this feature yet, it's on its way, so do not fret, it's coming. Uh, if I go to click on Share to Teams, and I will let you know real quick actually that uh, if you use an ad blocker, it actually seems to be causing an issue where you can't necessarily choose the team that you wanna send it to. So just fair warning. So you can see you get a preview of what the email looks like. It's gonna send the content in, and then you have the option here to include or not include the e attachment. So you can see since I Uncheck that the files were removed, and if I check it, they are added in here. So I'm just going to send this into the uh, customer service uh, channel here, and I'm just going to click share. So this is automatically being sent into Teams. It's pretty much immediate. If I jump over here, you'll see, yep, there it is, perfect. So this shows you that this is a forwarded email. Uh, it gives you all the information about uh, from the email itself, right, and then the files. Now, uh, if I go in here and I wanted to reply, let's say, I can say uh, to the channel, because there is no way to really get a hold of the channel in this case, uh, except for specifically calling them out in a reply and say, hey, customer service, take a look at this and provide your input by tomorrow at close business, right? And press send. Uh, there used to be a warning. There's not one right here any longer. Maybe they got rid of it where it would actually point out that you're responding to an email in Teams and that it's not affecting the email itself, which I actually thought was a really good warning so that people realized 
uh, that they didn't have to, or they weren't actually affecting the original email that was sent out. But that is important to know. You are not doing anything with the email. The email itself is not a now a copy inside of your Teams channel, and you can do whatever you want with it. So these files are now available. If I go into the Files tab, you're going to have a new file here, or a new folder called Email Messages. Now, if you've sent emails before or shared emails, you will already have this folder, uh, but this is new for here. And you can see the email itself is right here. This is that EML file. And then the PowerPoint and Word files are here. They are just like any other file that you would have in Teams. So you can jump in right now and start editing, make changes, blah, 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 blah. And then once you're done, you can go back into Outlook, do the reply all, uh, download a copy of those files from the Files tab, and then upload them into, um, into Outlook so that you can send it back. So that's the first one. Uh, there are a couple minor downsides to this, and that just kind of comes with if something is easy, there's probably not much option for making it uh, uh, customizable. You'll see I'm kind of stuck with the forward here. I couldn't even remove that. I don't really care to see the information about the email, that metadata that emails bring in here, especially here, the uh, you know from Andy originally, all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> what I'm going to, what you can do if you want, uh, is instead use an email address. So I'm going to take this, uh, get the email address to this channel. So all you have to do is click the more options menu next to the channel name and you can click get email address. So if you've never created or used this uh, email address before the first time, what you're seeing right here is it's actually um, creating that email address. I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to go into Outlook and I'm going to forward this email to that email address. So you can see it's using that email address. That email address is ugly, no question about it. There is no out of the box way to make them shorter or prettier. Uh, there are external tools you can use to shorten it or use a custom domain, but that's something that you'd have to do separately. Now this is where you have some more control. The subject line of uh, this message or this conversation in Teams really shouldn't be forward colon, right? Like that's not what this is about. That's just an artifact from the email. And perhaps I don't wanna see uh, all the artifacts from the email about this. I could actually split this up and say, uh, you know, from Matt, <clears throat> and I could even maybe bold it so it kind of separates it out. And I can remove these artifacts and say, from Andy. And now both messages are there. They're a little bit prettier to see. Um, and that's really useful. The other thing is I could actually just remove all of this content and just paraphrase what was said so people don't have to read this verbatim and spend a lot of time. Now that brings in the ethics of, you know, did you paraphrase correctly? Are you trying to remove something somebody said? But you know, if you're in a team that people, you know, that you trust everybody, you can just say, hey, I'm trying to save you a bunch of reading. Here's two sentences to summarize what's going on here. So I can press send on this one. And this again should be reasonably immediate. Um, uh, and what happens is this will come through and you can see here it is. So the, the subject line is what I changed it to. You can see that I uh, separated these out, did some formatting, got rid of all those artifacts and the same files are here. In fact, the file names were identical. So I'm kind of curious to see what happens when you upload these. Uh, so it actually creates a time stamped version of the file name so that you can't actually overwrite the file name so that you actually have uh, two different versions of it. So of course, this would be bad practice. Don't forward and share. Uh, but just to show you exactly what happens here, it definitely makes a uh, timestamp at the end of the file name so that you're not going to have uh, a mistaken overwrite or some sort of impact there, which is really, really good. Another thing about using the email is that uh, by default, the email address is accessible and usable by anybody. So you could actually use this as like a submission process where you tell different vendors and maybe you have a different channel for every potential vendor that's being uh, for an RFP and vendors are sending in proposals. Well, you can have one email address for just a proposals cha uh, channel and every vendor just sends their proposal in to this email address. So you don't have to triage anything. It just goes directly in there. Great. You're good to go. Or if you have a ch private channels, let's say for each of the different um, vendors that you're working with or customers or something like that where they can't necessarily see each other, you can still get an email address for a private channel and you could have them sit forward or send any files that they need to there. Uh, and then you can have basically a protected space for working with those vendors without them having to necessarily have too much access, you know, that kind of thing. Now for the uh, sending of the email and using the email address, you can actually manage how that works and admittedly i haven't looked at this in a while but there is a way to so if you go into the uh, get email address there is a section here called advanced settings so if you click on that you can actually uh, change 
who can send emails? Only members of the team, only emails sent from certain domains, maybe they're you know, um, friendly organizations you work with or anyone. So if you wanna set it so that only a certain vendor from their domain, you can do that. Totally, totally doable. So uh, this is how you send uh, an email or share an email from Outlook to, uh, to Teams. You will note that uh, from Outlook, the share button works really well. The forward email, that is not just an Outlook thing. You could be sending that from Gmail, uh, from uh, AOL mail if you want to, from anybody's other uh, work or school account. So um, the differences here really are Share from Outlook using that button right in the email uh, is very easy, very quick, but you don't have a lot of customizability uh, and uh, you can't necessarily change any of the content in the email. You can't change the subject line, things like that. Uh, and then the other is a little more complex. You have to get the email address, but you can actually work with outsiders a lot more uh, slickly and you can uh, kind of change who can send the emails in if you want to. So very cool feature. Hopefully you found this useful. A like and a subscribe is always appreciated and uh, feel free to uh, mention anything else that you happen to use this for or if you've never heard of it before how you're going to use it and if you have any ideas or requests for future videos by all means please drop them in the comments and I would be happy to hear them and try to uh, oblige. Thanks very much and happy sharing of emails into Microsoft Teams.